Welcome to our tutorial on quick image editing and basic setup for your assignment pages with Im images. I have gone ahead and uh, done a couple things here. First of all, as you know, for these sessions, you have several activities related to images, and I want to talk briefly about how to uh, complete that assignment. The first thing you want to do is set up a new page in WordPress. And for the sake of your sanity, you might label it session seven, assignment one, assignment two, or you might describe it more of, you know, session seven cropping or uh, session seven image levels, etc. How you name it's really up to you as a personal choice. However, I would suggest doing something to organize it just to make yourself a little, uh, to make this process a little bit smoother. The next thing I've done is I've gone ahead and typed in the word source colon and I'm going to type in or get into there my uh, hyperlink for the um, image. I do want to write down the date retrieved um, and for a full image credit you would normally also um, indicate the licensing that's available. Now I do not expect you to do that for these assignments so what is um, appropriate here source and then the date retrieved and if you want to put in a little horizontal line to kind of break that up that's fine too. I've uh, typed in the phrase original image although you could also add that to the title of the image via WordPress if you wanted to. Now where am I getting my images from? I'm going out and searching Creative Commons. I've come up with this particular image um, through the Smithsonian Institution. Um, I have a whole bunch of readings on Creative Commons, how to find those images and what uh, Creative Commons is all about. Please read all of that information. Please use images from Creative Commons for your exercises. Okay, moving on. This is the image that I've chosen and this is through Flickr. Flickr has a, a bunch of things going on on their interfaces over here, but I'm going to scroll down here and show you. If you don't immediately see a place to go ahead and download the uh, image file, Find the little three ellipses and if you click on that you should be able to click on download all sizes. Now these are the sizes that this image is available to me in. And of course I can download any one of the sizes or, or all of them. However, let me talk very briefly. First of all, I want to go in theory with the largest possible image so that as I manipulate it I can always shrink it to a smaller container by resizing it or I can actually make the file sm smaller by clicking on a, a resampling process, right? However, I, I can't do the reverse. I can't take a tiny image and expect it to be able to blow up to a nice large image. It will pixelate and just won't have very good results. So again, general rule of thumb is always go with your larger version and um, work down from that. Now in this particular case, however, I see that there's an original here that's about 6700 by 4200 pixels and that's a bit too large for my project so I don't really need to go that high. If I were layering in a background I might go with 6700 by 4200 and then manipulate it. 6700 is still too large for a background. I probably wouldn't go over 2000 pixels for a background. Um, so this is a little bit too small for a background, this is a little bit too large for a background, but again, the strategy would be to download the original and then resample it and resize it to an appropriate size for a background. For our purposes, we're going to grab an image and insert it into a WordPress, not as a background, just as a general image. So therefore, the 1024 by 647 pixel size is going to be plenty for us. I'm clicking on that, I'm clicking on download, and then I'm going to pop over here and click on show in folder and uh, let me just show you all of those images really quickly here. Um, actually, let me do this. Sorry, I'm manipulating some stuff that you can't see. Let's try that one more time here. Let's go ahead and do that. Click on download all sizes, large, download. So now I have here on my desktop, this is the image that I just downloaded. And I have it set on my computer to download to the desktop. Obviously you would be looking where your content downloads to. Now in this particular case, um, I only have this one image here. However, if I had multiple images on my desktop, I might get to the point where I rename them. 
so that I have a better sense of what the image is or at least I can find it uh, more easily because all of these images are coming down with these long file names, right? But in any case, that's what we have, 1, 3, 5, 3, etc. So I know that. Now I'm going to come over here to Pixlr and this is the editor that I'm asking you guys to use. Um, it has a huge number of features which is really cool. Um, it, it certainly stands to be able to compete with the bigger uh, regularly installed software packages. There are a few things missing but man for what uh, it does, it does it great. So I'm going to come to open an image from my computer and I'm going to find it landing here on the desktop. Click on open and there it is. Now for your purposes for um, the assignments once you've loaded it into Pixlr you're going to go ahead and manipulate it per whatever assignment you're dealing with either um, cropping it or perhaps enhancing it or perhaps uh, doing levels. I'm going to show you as an example here uh, playing with the levels. Now this particular image is an older image obviously and it is rather flat either due to the uh, equipment of the day or the processing of the image. The ultimate is that uh, we could probably enhance it and, and make it so that we can see it a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on adjust and I'm going to go to levels. Now there's multiple ways to do this. You can play with brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, all sorts of things here. But for my purposes I'm going to go to levels. And what levels are are basically taking an image's red, green, and blue channels and saying that uh, this is basically how much is on the red channel. This is how much is on the green channel. So if you wanted to skew the image to a heavier content one way or the other, for example, um, if I wanted to go with red, I could, um, this is basically pulling it out and then pulling it back in, I could skew it towards a red. Now that obviously doesn't really enhance the photo in, in keeping the uh, original integrity of the photo at the same time. This is more of an art kind of thing. I'm going to cancel that super quick and go back. Um, but you can do all sorts of things with levels. So the one thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to get involved in playing with the red, blue, green channels individually. I'm just going to try to make the overall image a little bit more visible. And the way I'm going to do that, first of all, is I've got a lot of dead space right at this particular area here as well as right at the end here. So the first thing I can do is, is enhance the image by um, saying to the computer only look where these particular pixels are landing, right? And so already the image looks a little bit better, it looks a little bit darker, and then I can go ahead and play with the different um, midpoints of these pieces. I can also play with the output level. For example, if I wanted to uh, enhance it a little bit more, this is just um, basically playing with lightness and darkness or contrast here. But in, in any case, I'm going to uh, not play with this too long because this is just a sample. And I've gone ahead and manipulated it a little bit in terms of where I want uh, the image to, uh, to focus its, its um, viewpoint in terms of cutting out extra pixels. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on OK and I'm going to leave my image that way. So now the super important part is to go ahead and click on File and Save. And remember that we're sitting within a web app, so you're not trying to go to the browser and File Save. You're going within the web app of um, File and Save. Now, very important is when you do this, you want to rename your file so that it does not override your uh, initial file. And of course, Format JPEG is our best bet at this point. Saving location, best bet is my computer because um, unless you've got a Pixlr library account, you can't do it there. Um, for our purposes, I need you to have this in your WordPress. So while you can post it to these other venues, you certainly don't need to do that for me. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And now it's going to pop out to a traditional desktop and say, is this where you want to save it? I'm going to go ahead and click on Save. Now, when I close this, it's going to ask me to save one more time. And that's fine. I'm going to do that. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click on Save. It's going to ask, do I want to replace it? I'm going to say yes. And that basically finishes up our work on Pixlr. Now I'm coming back over here into WordPress and I want to insert the original image. Well, um, to do that, I'm going to click where I want that to happen. I'm going to click on Add Media. And now I have already sampled this myself. So I've already got these here, but for the purposes of um, 
showing you how to do this, I'm going to go ahead and click on Upload Files. I'm going to click on Select Files. Now, um, here is my newly created one. Here is my original one. So I'm going to go ahead. I can do these one at a time. I can do them both at the same time by clicking on them and then doing a control click on the second one. But for the purposes of um, our exercise, I'm going to do them one at a time. I'm going to open that up and here it's uploading. Now ideally, um, I'm going to give this title something really um, uh, descriptive and, and correct. But for my purposes, I'm going to do Smithsonian original and I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Oops. I'm going to copy that to my caption, alt text, and description. And you should always put in the title. You should always put in the alt text. And you should always put in a description. Now, the caption isn't required for all images under WordPress. However, I do ask for these exercises. You put the caption in there. That just puts the caption under the image itself. Again, it's not required for all images. If you didn't want a caption, you wouldn't put it in there. Um, over here where it says link to media file, um, I'm going to um, say none because mainly I don't have the web address in there right now, so it's not going to link to anything appropriate. And then the size. Now, I happen to know that this image came in at 1,000. It's being scaled down to 300. Um, I'm going to actually go um, slightly smaller than that, mainly because I want to be able to see them both on one kind of uh, view screen once I've gotten it into the page. I'm going to go ahead and insert it there. Um, now the next thing I want to do is I want to not do that. I want to come down here and I'm going to go ahead and type in um, a short descriptor of what this new image is going to be. I'm going to click on Add uh, Media and um, because I've just redone this I'm going to go ahead and re-upload this new image. I'm going to title this um, And I'm going to put that into my caption, alt text, and description. And once again, I'm going to come down. Um, and I'm going to reverse my directions before. I don't have to link to anything, but I'm going to go ahead and link to the media file, mainly because I'm going to force this to come in at a smaller size. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in as a medium uh, size. I'm going to link it to the media file so that if um, it doesn't quite fit on the page, somebody can click on it and open it into a new page. I'm going to click on to insert into page and here is my end result. So if I take a look here, I'm going to go ahead and update that, update that, excuse me, super quick. And then if I pop out and view the page, this is a sample of one of your exercise pages here. What you can see is obviously you've got some sort of title. This is linked from your instructional design page. If we pop down here, here's the source, here's the date retrieved. Here is the original image, and then here is the image that's been adjusted per whatever the exercise uh, I'm asking you to do is. Now you can play around with making your images larger. The original and the uh, post or after image can be the same size. Totally up to you and whatever it works. So this is a sample of how to create an image page for your assignments.